Hey everyone, it's Michael Green, and this is to show everyone in the Parallel Programming Club how to enable OpenMP in Windows using code blocks. I'm going to try to keep this brief because it's not very difficult at all. The main things you'll need to know are this. You can get code blocks easily by just googling code blocks and going to the download page and getting it. Just make sure you're trying to get yourself 10.5. I'm sorry, 10.05. In the settings, compiler and debugger, you'll find the compiler settings, linker settings, and toolchain executables. In the toolchain executables, we have the mingw folder directory is shown as where it's getting the C compiler, the linker, and all that good stuff. What we want to do is get rid of the original mingw folder and put the new mingw folder that has everything we need in it in its place so what we'll do is we'll navigate to code blocks and we'll just delete the mingw folder that's already there mine was at local disk program files code blocks you do that and then you go on over to the Parallel Programming Club Moodle page and you'll find MinGW installer for Windows. It'd be very important that you find out where that you get on the Moodle because I actually have the EXE in the Moodle itself so you don't have to go looking online to find it. Otherwise you can just type MinGW installer into Google and do a search for the download. Save it to wherever you want. Run it. Yes. And you'll want to make sure that you download the latest repository catalogs. Because if you're watching this video and it's 2020, uh, you don't want to get anything too old. And hopefully this video is still useful in 2020. You'll accept the agreement and you'll choose a directory. I chose a desktop when I actually downloaded it but you can pick any place that you think you can get to easily and make sure you choose the C++ compiler that's very important because well we're C++ programmers after all and you just hit next and it'll go and do the rest of the magic associated with pulling files from the internet and putting them in the area you wanted them. I'm not going to do it now because as you can see I've done it a million times mine is at the desktop called mingw what we'll do is hit copy and we'll paste it where the old one used to be continue so now we're getting this updated mingw folder if you've ever looked through the mingw folder that was there before it didn't have the library we needed and we also can't verify the version of compiler we had so just kill every bird with one stone by including this new one what we'll do now is go into code blocks we'll go back to the settings compiler and debugger and we're going to tell our compiler, hey, I want you to look at OpenMP code and know that it's there and what it is. And since we're using a GNU GCC compiler, or GNU, you really need to put in dash F OpenMP. Now, the way you get there was settings, compiler and debugger, compile, compiler settings, other options. It's a compiler flag that we're adding that isn't in this list of checkable ones. We then need to go to linker settings. Here's where we will link our folder, our library that we now have in the new MinGW folder. The thing you have to remember is this. Even if you push pound include, if it doesn't know where the directory is or where the file is, it's not going to link it. So we can easily put pound include omp.h and get nothing at all for the simple fact that openmp.h can't be found. So we're going to tell it where it is. 
And we're going to go to, for me, it's C, Program Files, Code Blocks, MinGW, Bin. Make sure you go to the Bin folder. Now you're going to see nothing there because it's looking for library files. .a, .so, .lib, .dilib, and .bundle. We're going to tell it to look for all files because we have it in the form of a DLL, a dynamically linked library. So we're just going to scroll on down until we get to the DLLs. And we're looking for libgomp-1.dll. All right, that's the libg open in p dash one dot dll. We hit open, press OK, and now that library is linked. So let's test it out. If you downloaded Murphy slides and some examples, which is in the open in p section, then you got something called version dot c. This will basically have a file where it's included openmp.h, good. Inside openmp.h is a global variable. Uh, they call it an environment vari variable called underscore openmp. And this has a, it's an integer that has a value of either 200,805, if you have version 3.0, which we want to use, and 200,505, if you have version 2.5, which you don't want to use. So, We'll hit run. Look at that. OpenMP version 3.0 has a macro value of 200,805. Note that this was using standard IO.h to output to that, which uses the printf function to output something to the screen. Most of you are used to IO stream, but don't get don't get confused. This is still C. So now we know that include OpenMP.h works successfully. We did it correct. Don't worry about this process terminated badly. I push the X instead of hitting enter to exit. That's all that means. So now we're going to go and open up hello.c. This is what we use dash f open in p to make it read. These pound pragma statements for open in p parallel. Basically what this will do is cause the next programming block to be executed by every available processor on your machine. My machine has two processors. It's a core, core 2 duo. So this print function should activate twice and print hello world two times. And that's exactly what we got. I'm going to hit enter. And you see the process terminated with the status zero, return zero, which is what we wanted. So you know it's not broken. This ends the tutorial, guys. Good luck and happy studying.